Sean Penn wanted to be more than his body would let him be. He was a celebrity, and a pretty one at that. Which made being a serious artist sort of tough. I had an abusive streak and a series of high-profile relationships, and the last thing the media cared about was what kind of director he would turn into. Penn's professional life and his art haven't mixed well. Though we sometimes forget about his past, his films are worth remembering, if only as a study of a declining Hollywood self-image. 90s image-making has vanished completely. Most of the people who made sturdy dramas back then have become irrelevant or fundamentally changed. Penn never wanted to fit into the times. My dad used to always say that Bob Dylan wanted to write songs that could have been written a hundred years ago. Sean Penn wanted to make movies that would have been made 50 years ago. He wanted to be James Dean or Dennis Hopper, who transitioned from high-profile sidekick roles to bad boy director in the late 60s. Penn was equally enamored of film's capacity to shake a generation upside down and watch its ideas fall out like loose change. Penn once signed a petition condemning the Academy for giving Ilya Kazan an honorary Oscar in the 90s, but he'd been doing a pretty good Kazan impression up to that point. Now that's how I'm gonna clear the table. Don't you ever talk that way to me. Is there were strangers? Hmm? We're not strangers. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh. Pinky, let's eat. You eat. <laughs> you eat. His first films as a director show an artist looking for canvases to slash. His edits range from frantic to patient. He wanted to transpose the gently psychedelic classic rock he loved and grew up with to montage. One begins to read between the pages of a look. The shape of sleepy music and suddenly you're hooked. Sounds were where he imagined a film's consciousness to live. His sound designs, his edit, his camera. Nothing was ever at rest for long, because that's how he wanted to live, but never got a chance to. The Pledge was his third film, and it's likely his best. It's a peculiar auto-critique about a guy who looks to always be on the right side of things, but who stupendously and flamboyantly ruins his own perfect respite through obsession. Jack Nicholson plays a cop who can't shake the feeling that his last case remains unsolved, even as he relaxes from his retirement cottage. I thought you were supposed to be fishing in Mexico. Yeah. I know, Stan. I, I went to the airport. I heard the boarding announcement, and I, I just didn't feel right. Some went off. I, I need more time on this. You want me to reopen a case because you got a hunch? Jerry, no offense, but you're retired. You don't work here anymore. Okay, I know, Stan, I, I know, but uh, could you run it through the system for me anyway? You know, just a standard query, similar crimes, profile, victims. Could you? Say for... Uh, last 10, 12 years, could you, Stan? He settles down, marries a woman he doesn't deserve, builds a new life for himself away from crime and carnage. 
Men like this never admit it. But he's looking for an excuse to run his existence off the rails because he can't abide calm or serenity. Welcome to the house of our Lord. May Jesus be with you. Nicholson's leading man screws everything up for himself, looking more crazed and ugly as he descends into helpless, drunken paranoia. You understand you don't know what you are dealing with here. This guy is real and I know it. He's no wizard, Jerry. We got our man a year and a half ago, Toby Wadner. You're making this real difficult for me. What, Stan? Mm. Call it a quiz. Call it a quiz. We're out of here. It's over. That's it. Okay, Stan. You do what you gotta do. I'll do what I gotta do. Just when you leave, don't compromise this operation. You understand me? The cognitive dysmorphia. The gap between who we imagine ourselves to be and who we really are is at the heart of Penn's art. I made a promise. I made a promise to find Ginny Larson's murderer. I intend to keep it. You gotta start getting on with your life, you know? I mean, uh, sometimes when you go through big changes, uh, retirement's definitely one of them. It can cause a lot of added stress. Sometimes it's a good idea just to talk to someone, you know, someone professional. I made a promise, Eric. You're old enough to remember when that meant something. He wants to be a humanitarian, an iconoclast, an artist, but he's stuck in his body like we all are. He's an actor with a history of violence, whose own art has lately taken a headlong dive into self-parody. His art doesn't save lives, but in the pledge we at least knew what that felt like thanks to the achingly precise study of grief and the nagging feeling of something missing. perfectly translates the jittery solitude of a man with lives unlived, purpose unfulfilled. Penn seemed to know somewhere that he wasn't going to be the artist he dreamt he might be. The pledge is the best he got, and it's all the better for knowing that dreams don't come true. <laughs> 